beloved saints over the hump day isn't that what they call it um i said i would do uh videos all week on our security our assurance and uh how faithful god is and it's about time for some good news isn't it i try to make these little devotionals just something for you to ponder most days it's a verse uh, and it's a theme for the week and other days it's just me telling you how scripture has uh, worked in my life some way or a testimony that's personal but today I just wanted to use King Solomon as an example uh, I'm doing a little video on it I have one from years ago and Dr. Andy Woods actually came over and said this is one of the best uh, uh, verses I've seen that that shows um, our blessed assurance in Christ um, in the Old Testament and I was so happy and I've been trying to get him to um, uh, do an interview but he's a busy dude <laughs> but I, I lost touch with him <coughs> after the um, house burned down and I just hadn't brought it back but uh, I want to show this to you now this is something a lot of believers just don't understand is that when somebody belongs to the Lord right we're always told, you know, you got to uh, turn from all your sins to be saved. And they think that how you're living is getting you saved. But as I've always said, behavior is not the Savior. Thank you, Jonathan. He said the Lordship uh, salvation motto should be behavior is the Savior. And he's right. But it's not. It's uh, Our salvation is secure because of the work of Christ. That's the good news of the gospel is that Jesus did fulfill God's law. And he did pay the debt we owed, which was death. That was the wages we earned for sin. And he paid it for us so that we can live forever with him. That is the wonderful news. And uh, somehow it's turned into a list of what you got to do, unfortunately. So I want to show you. So when, when a Christian, a believer, someone that belongs to God, a child of God, we'll say. Uh, because you admit it, not all believers are Christians. We, some people get saved and they, you never would know because they never really got discipled, but they're going to heaven. They just didn't serve the Lord. And uh, whenever a, a believer, a child of God does something, let's say, you know, that we know God would not approve of, there's temporal, earthly consequences for it. Even under the Old Covenant, it was the same. The only difference is now there's no like curse over us. The curse of the law it says when you didn't keep it perfectly, you were cursed. And we've been delivered from that. So, but even then, I'm going to show you God's grace. Okay? A lot of people think King Saul went to hell. No. No. The prophet Samuel, when he... He pulled his uh, spirit up from Sheol. I believe at that time it was still Abraham's bosom. Whatever, the uh, Sheol, the grave, was still in another place. They couldn't enter heaven until Jesus died. Um, and there's other other information that proves that. that. Because when he rose, the dead got up and walked around Jerusalem. The Old Testament saints did. And I believe they're ruling and reigning with him right now. But at that time, they were held in paradise. And we see the witch of Endor brings his spirit up. And he tells Saul, tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. So he was in the same place the prophet Samuel was. And that would not be a place of torment. So what did Saul suffer? He suffered terribly. The kingdom was taken away. He couldn't hear from God anymore. The spirit left him. And so what happened? Demons constantly tormented this man. David had to come and play harp to get the demons to flee because they tormented Saul so much. It made him so paranoid. He kept trying to kill David. And, uh, but it didn't, it wasn't damnation. It was temporal earthly consequence and it even says in the scriptures that Saul died because he went and saw a witch and did necromancy when it was forbidden so uh, now I do not believe that the dead as in saved people can be contacted uh, because they're with the Lord in heaven I think it's demonic I think the spirits come out they're familiar spirits and they imitate the dead 
but back then I believe because they were held in Sheol, it was it was possible because it doesn't say that the familiar spirit the witch of Endor had was pretending to be the prophet Samuel. It says, uh, and he perceived it was Samuel. So, um, and even the witch was like, what? Like she was shocked, <laughs> you know? And uh, so the reason I'm telling you this is because even as disobedient as he was, he wasn't damned forever. He suffered terribly on the earth. So I want to show you this great verse about how faithful God is. It's based on his promises, not because the person kept it. Now, you remember some of God's promises back then were conditional. And it was to show the law was to show us our need for a savior and to point us uh, to Christ. And you can see a little bit of the prophetic here. But he's uh, talking to God is speaking to Nathan, the prophet. And this is the message that he's going to give David because David wants to know, can he build the house for God? Can he build the temple? God tells him no, but he's going to have his descendant build it and that he's going to have a descendant be on the throne forever. Now, this is one of the reasons the Jews still reject Jesus as they are looking for an earthly king on an earthly throne. But the throne established forever is heavenly throne and we still to this day look at some of the scriptures and think uh, flesh Israel flesh Jerusalem one is the mother of us all the other one is the mother of something else so I want to show this to you you can see how faithful God is okay so this is what he's telling uh, Nathan to tell David and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers I will set up thy seed after thee. Remember, David is the is an ancestor of Jesus. So it's prophetic about him as well as Solomon, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, that's Solomon, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. That's Jesus. The throne of forever is Jesus. I will be his father and he shall be my son. Now this is going back to speak of uh, Solomon. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. See, Saul lost the kingdom and his mercy left, his spirit left. He couldn't rule the kingdom. But that's what he suffered temporally. Now, it's a promise that even if Solomon does something wicked like Saul did in disobedience, that his spirit won't leave him. See, the promises come before the law. And the, the law can't disannul the promises. The, the promises have to be kept because what God says and promises, he does because the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. They are irrevocable. He will not take them back. And so, you know, uh, I'll, I'll do a video on it showing how wicked this guy was, what he did. But he built houses of idolatry for pagan kings of child sacrifice because of his wives. Despite the Lord showing up in person two times to Solomon, which I believe is a pre-incarnate Christ. I believe it's a pre-incarnate Christophany. He appears to Solomon twice and warns him specifically about his wives. Foreign wives are going to turn your heart away from me, but he did it anyway. But what does God's promise say? My mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And it goes on to say that thy kingdom shall be established forever, which is a prophetic uh, uh, verse about Jesus. So I wanted to show you even the <laughs> wicked things like that, building worship places for pagan demon gods where they killed babies it's still God's with him God 
never forsook him, but he, he suffered on the earth, just like Saul did. And that's what scripture says. If we would judge ourselves, we would not need to be judged because we are not condemned with the world in the end. See? So I, I hope that can help you because if anybody's like struggling, well, I did this and I, that is temporal consequence. And God is so merciful that sometimes he even rescues and saves us from those and the extent of how bad those temporal consequences can be sometimes. He's just so good. And so there's a lot of warnings of, about behavior for the believer. And it's to, to for a lot of things. The church can be damaged. A witness can be damaged. But God remains faithful. So remember that. My spirit or my mercy will not depart from Solomon. And his mercy will not depart from you. It's even greater today. Remember everyone in the Old Testament, because the cross paid for the sins that were past, were saved by Jesus too. But they didn't get the peace of knowing that yet. They were looking at the animal sacrifices and stuff, looking forward to the cross. And we look backwards, but we have eyes to see because we understand what God has done for us. So rest in that. Uh, I think I put in yesterday's, uh, we who have believed do enter into rest. We cease from our own works as God did from his. Jesus is our rest because he's done all the work. And we're saved forever. You can't be saved and then not saved because then you weren't saved. You had a temporary reprieve, <laughs> but it's not being saved. I, I once told a uh, I'll, I'll give the I'll give the example in another video. It's going to be too long, but God is awesome, and His mercy will not depart from you. I find that the more you love God, and the more it says the goodness of God will, leads men to repentance. It makes us turn to Him. It makes us want to be in His presence. The more somebody's condemned, the less they're interested in Scripture. The less they're interested in spending time with God. So it never works the way they want it to. It actually makes people go away from God. But when you know he loves you and that he sees his son's perfection in your place when it comes to relationship, we can come boldly to the throne of grace for help in the time of need. Because our shame was carried by Jesus. Okay, you guys, have a blessed day. Bye. <laughs>